JavaScript powers our websites. We can think of JavaScript as the machinery behind the elements of our web pages. It's what makes our web pages do something. The user clicks a button and the page reacts, calculating a result, reading and checking an entered value, displaying other content, or changing styles. JavaScript, abbreviated JS, is a programming language. It's best known as the language of the web because all browsers understand JavaScript. Here's an example of some JavaScript, just so you can picture what it looks like. It may look a bit intimidating with all of its odd punctuation, but it will become more familiar. We'll describe the syntax in detail as we progress through this course. Though it was originally designed to work in a browser, JavaScript can also be used to build mobile applications for Android and iOS and create server-side code for a back-end web server. We covered the difference between a front-end and back-end in the gentle introduction to programming course earlier in this series. But we'll focus on using JavaScript with web pages in this course. Don't confuse JavaScript with Java, which is a separate programming language with different syntax and usage. Think of it this way. Java is to JavaScript as ham is to hamburger. The names are similar, but that's about it. You may hear the term ECMAScript or ES, especially when referring to JavaScript versions. ECMA stands for the European Computer Manufacturers Association, a standards organization. ECMAScript is a standard for scripting languages. By defining a standard specification, we get better compatibility across different browsers, so our website works more or less consistently on Chrome or Firefox or Edge or any browser. JavaScript is based on the ECMAScript standard. Originally, JavaScript versions were denoted with sequential numbers, such as ES5 and ES6. In 2015, versions were instead denoted with the year, so 2015 up to 2023 and beyond. With JavaScript, we can build dynamic and interactive web pages. What does that mean exactly? We can locate HTML elements on the page so we can do something with them. Once we locate an HTML element, we can react to its events. An event is a notification from the browser that an important action occurred. An event can be from a user action, such as a button click or mouse move. Or an event can come from a browser action, after the page is loaded, for example. Like any other programming language, we can use JavaScript to store values and variables, such as the user's name or score, calculate adding values or figuring out a tip, or use it to do something, such as moving a game piece or making a decision. We can write content to the web page. We can add simple text, such as a message. Or we can add entire HTML elements, such as paragraphs and table rows and columns. We can change an element's content, for example, changing a button from Start to Play to Play Again. Or change an element's style. We can modify any of the style properties even change its display property to hide or show an element. How does it work? How does the browser run JavaScript code? When the browser loads a web page, the browser evaluates the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript it finds, starting at the top. It starts with the structural tags, then the head element. It processes the meta tags, sets the title, links in the defined style sheet, and runs the JavaScript code in this script. Note that code here in the head element is run before the body of the page is loaded. JavaScript code written here cannot reference any of the body HTML elements because they aren't loaded yet. If we try to use JavaScript to find this button and change its content, for example, it wouldn't work, and we may see an error. Next, for each HTML element in the body, the browser styles the element with any style selected for the element and displays the element. When the browser finds JavaScript code in a script tag, it runs that code. 
Since this code is after the displayed HTML elements, here we can reference any of those elements. If this HTML or style class syntax doesn't look familiar, consider revisiting the HTML and CSS prerequisites for this course. We'll cover the JavaScript syntax in this course. Now, let's see this code in action. Here I have the code from the slide shown on the left and the running website on the right. I'll open the Browser Developer Tools, and I'll select the Console tab so we can see any messages written to the console. In the editor, scrolling down, in this example, we have three sets of JavaScript code, here, here, and here. In each case, the code uses console.log. Console.log is a very useful JavaScript method that displays the provided text to the console here. Use console.log whenever you want to see what's going on in the code. Let's review what happened when this page was loaded. The browser runs this code first as it evaluates the head element tags and displays this message. The browser then displays the HTML contained in the body element. The browser then runs this code to find at the bottom of the body element, and it displays this message. The code within the button element is not run. The browser only runs this code when the specified event is triggered for that element. In this example, the event is on click, which means that the code will execute when the user clicks the button. When I click the button, we see the log message. We'll talk more about this syntax coming up in this course, and we'll build this game in a moment. For now, let's go back to the slides. So, JavaScript is a programming language that brings logic and interactivity to our web pages. It works with all browsers. We use it to find and interact with our HTML elements, store values and variables, and perform calculations and operations. For all things JavaScript, your best reference is the Mozilla Developer Network, or MDN. You can find it at developer.mozilla.org. Let's take a closer look at some basic JavaScript concepts, then we'll jump into some coding. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more, please like and subscribe.